you're thinking yes. something's going to happen and then it happens and then you're like, I, right. knew, it. I knew like, it was going to happen. Like maybe I did it. Like maybe and, I just like, yeah. internalized that thought and like brought it into fruition. Like who knows? Yeah. And that's why it's just like, it's all fucking uncertain. Like life is uncertain and people are just trying to like grasp onto something. Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and a space where we share stories on all things queer related. And hey, if you're new listening to this, give us a follow on Spotify and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Guys, if you haven't seen, we are now um, showing full video episodes on YouTube. So you can watch these episodes anywhere where you watch. Uh, be sure to tune in, hit that subscribe button. Uh, the link to watch the YouTube videos in the description. Sorry, my cat's being such a spaz. If you can see this on YouTube. Wow. Our guest on today is a TikToker, a self-proclaimed aspiring internet queer. Uh, she talks about dating Zodiacs, uh, being sober, being a cat mom, and mm. being a Libra. And I am too. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Please welcome Allie Campbell. Hi, guys. I'm so happy to have you on. Um, I've been, yeah, I've been following you for a while. And so wanted to have you on here. I have four cats in this apartment. So oh, I see one of them on your bed. Yeah. It's my ex's cat, but oh, that's, <laughs> I love, I love him a lot. I feel like I was talking to someone who also had a pet that wasn't theirs. I swear to God, it was, I don't, I remember, I don't remember who I was interviewing and it wasn't like in the final edit, but it's right. very common. It's not, uh, it's not uncommon. Not going to lie. Yeah, it's not uncommon in our community, I don't think. What were you going to say before I interrupted you? You were going to say something, and then I was like, (laughs) I'm really happy to be talking to another Libra. I don't have any other Libras in my life. Well, I do, but not uh, queer women. Most of my friends growing up are Libras. Is that really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. One gay, only one gay one, though, but the rest are. The rest are straight, but yeah, like ever since I was a kid, I know at least five people have my actual birthday. What? October 6th. Yep. Dude, that's my birthday. No! I swear to God. I swear to God. No! Now I have like seven. What? (laughs) Yeah. That that couldn't have been planned. We couldn't have planned that. No, no. I have three, three Libras from childhood. One, we were born the same hospital. Like, in the same, like, across, like, the hall, basically, which is very odd. What? Yeah. That's crazy. And I grew up playing sports with a bunch of Libras, and when I played soccer, like, there were just, oh, it's literally so many Libras. So many fucking Libras. I don't, like, all of my I'm in the wrong place. (laughs) Fairly. Wait, so, like, do you think, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be answering questions, not asking, but I just was going to say, like, I feel like it's telling that we're both Libras, and we both have made like conscious decisions to like be in like the public eye (laughs) you know what I'm saying (laughs) yeah but it's not like how Leo's are in the public eye it's like you know less tacky (laughs) (laughs) I didn't choose this for myself but this shows me this shows me and like if I don't do this then it's just going against fate I get it yeah (laughs) (laughs) um it's funny though because I always wanted a podcast like I always wanted a podcast I was like you know wanted to like have a following and not just to have one like for vanity's sake but like just I felt like I had something to offer and something to give and I didn't really know what that was at the time and I wasn't in a good place to do it at the time but it's like I felt like I was gonna do it like I know it sounds crazy but it's like I felt like I, I, I almost already had it. Not in a narcissistic way, but just like a, I feel like that's just going to happen for me. And I had no idea that it would happen on fucking TikTok of all places. No, I can completely relate to that. Like I've actually never heard anybody verbalize it in the way that I've, I've thought about it. And that's it. Like I always yeah. just felt like I had a message to share, even yeah. if I like didn't know what that message was yet. And I always felt like very called to like speaking on shit I have no business speaking on and then eventually (laughs) just like kind of like coming into myself and realizing like oh I kind of know what I'm talking about you know what I mean so I I totally get that yeah and I I felt the same way I mean at the time I had a lot of imposter syndrome and then I was kind of in the thick of things but it's like I just knew that like it was like going towards something you know and I don't consider myself a religious person but definitely spiritual law of attraction that kind of thing And even when I made TikToks, it wasn't like for the followers. It was to just 
it was an outlet and it was connecting. And then I was like, oh, people yeah. are relating to this. Oh my gosh. Like I'm getting followers. That's awesome. Like, holy shit. Is this, is this it? Is this what I, I was thinking about? I guess it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I totally so, get it. Like part of it was subconscious, but then part of it was like, I might, I manifested this shit. Like hundred yeah. percent, but yeah, crazy little, little, uh, thing there. But I was thinking about that this week and I was like, Jesus Christ, like it happened. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Crazy, crazy. Um, yeah. Leapers are, uh, I feel like I hate it because on TikTok, it's always portrayed as like bubbly and pink and, you know, whatever yeah. this chick from Clueless is and Kim K. And I'm like, I wanted to do, I don't do a lot of Zodiac posts. I like to do them though. Um, but I was like, I need, I want something like I started looking into all the Libra stuff and I was like, I want to see Aang from Avatar. I want to see Jim from the fucking office. Like I yeah. can't, I can't do just all of the girly stuff. Like where, where like the Libra men stuff, where's the more androgynous like Libras? Like where the fuck are they? Did you find them? Because I would love to know. No. And that's the oh, thing. Shit. Like most of the Zodiac stuff I was looking and I was looking for like Libra men and everyone was hating on them. And I was like, okay, well this, this isn't, this isn't it. Yeah. And Libra yeah. women was all like the glam and stuff. And I was like, okay, well that doesn't fit me either. Like, yeah. but yeah, I found some, I mean like, okay. Ang from Avatar. That's a, a fucking. Ang is a Libra. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I thought that one was Jim Halpert from The Office. I'm trying to think of some other ones that I saw that I like felt. Worse. I can very much relate to Jim energy, like oh, yeah. a lot. But yeah, I it, it it just felt so gendered. Like yeah, looking at yeah. and I was like, eh, doesn't quite fit. That's interesting too because it's like I've seen a lot of that as well. About I think it's a lot of it is because Kim Kardashian, Cardi B. But then you have like Halsey and like Halsey kind mm -hmm. of is on that like gender bending kind yeah. of thing. So like True. she's kind of like an icon for for Libras. But yeah, that, that the, this, this stereotypical part of it of, of being like glitzy and glam, it's a little overdone. But I will say that that is a part of my personality. <laughs> oh, me too. I love a nice aesthetic. I, yeah. you know, never wanted to admit I was into fashion and that kind of thing because I didn't want, it's like my family's not into fashion. We're in the fucking right. cornfields of Ohio. <laughs> my dad worked from home for 20 years and wore pajamas all day long. You know what I mean? Like my mom's yeah. a girl next door. Like none of, there's no vanity. And I was like, right. okay, well, like I'm into fashion, but like, would that be vain of me to be into fashion? And now I've like shed that. I'm like, fuck no, I can right. be into fashion and not be like an asshole. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love that. Like I started getting into that and I was like, you can be fashionable without having to be like super feminine presenting or just all of those yeah. like, things that I had in my head about it. But it made so much sense. Cause I was like, yeah, like I do. It's like, if I'm going to look like a bum, I'm going to look like a fashionable bum. You know what I mean? Like there's a difference. Balance, balance. There's a difference. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it was, it was kind of like the opposite for me. Like my mom is like super like Italian Jersey mom. Like okay. the hair is done every day. The makeup is done every day. And like, I remember so many times in childhood, like she would yell at my stepdad for leaving the windows open in the car because she didn't want the wind to mess up her hair. And like, oh we gosh. would just like, like fine, keep them closed. We're yeah. all dying and there's no air, but your hair is important. So, um, yeah, like that was, that was like kind of ingrained into me. So, um, it's been, it's been a long time coming. That's why I, I spent a lot of years trying to like find that balance of like, how can I still like show my androgynous side mm -hmm. while still like honoring like the traditionally feminine part of me yep. um, while, but not like in a way that makes me feel like inauthentic, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like I end up like beating my face with a full face of makeup, like going to get microbladed and then wearing a fucking snapback. And it's yeah. like, I'm just doing all the things and I, it feels, it feels good and it feels right, you know? So I also have Gemini placements, so I can't uh. even keep myself track down. <laughs> <laughs> what I find is so interesting too, is like, I was never a Zodiac person. Like I like knew my sun sign and like, that was about it. So like, I was maybe like a two out of 10 on the scale. And like, as I've like come into my queer identity and I've been out for like four years now, I've slowly gotten a little more. I feel like I'm like a six out of 10. 
Like, yeah. you know, I'm kind of on the cusp where I'm like, oh, it's fun. And like, I'll make jokes about it. And I'll be like, oh yeah, like I could tell you or the, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I find myself slowly getting to that point, but I still, I don't, I always still take it with a grain of salt. Like I take it as being fun. Don't make any decisions on it, but it is fun to, to think about it you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was definitely like, it's still kind of like an insecurity point for me that like a couple of the videos that I have on TikTok that blew up are astrology themed. Yeah. And I view that I view it in the same way. Like Mm -hmm. I, I don't like study it in depth. Like it's basically my entire knowledge base is based on like memes (laughs) and like, you know what I mean? Like other TikToks. (laughs) And like, there's so many other like amazing, like true astrologers out there who could like Mm -hmm. seriously like read a chart and and know what the hell they're talking about. So I I try to be very um, clear when I do make astrology videos that like, this is based on my experience and like, don't fucking come at me and tell me that this is a generalization because I'm aware and like, I can't deal with comments. Yeah. People in boxes based on fucking things in the sky which I mean, doesn't, honest to God, I mean, people have been putting each other in boxes for way worse. Right. Um, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but you have the out of boxers that are like, I don't want to put in a box. And it's like, don't, then don't just like, this is. But that's a box too. Like not wanting to be in a box. Like There's you're box. in the box. It's the, it's the, I don't want to be in a box box. And it's yeah. like, that's just human nature to kind of like categorize things and label things and oh, yeah. harmful, but also helpful. I feel like you have the gays that have like been hurt by like that one astrologist (laughs) girlfriend and they're like, I don't care about astrology. If you have astrology in your bio, I don't, I don't dig it. I I don't understand what the big thing is. Like, do you, but, and I'm like, Ooh, she's been hurt. Right. And I'm like, Ooh, Capricorn. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then everyone's like, what's your, but what's your sign though? Like I've seen those TikToks. Everyone's like, well, what's your sign? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that, that it's like, Anytime that you say that you're against astrology, there's like two to three signs that everyone's going to come back and be like, oh, so you're an Aquarius. Yeah. <laughs> like, Spoken like that a I'm two-faced not Gemini. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've gotten that before. Yeah. <laughs> God, that is, yeah, it is. It, I will say, I mean, I have done it. Like I have been in breakups and I have been like looking at their sign and been like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense and blah, blah, blah. Oh, for sure. But would I blame it on the fact that they are? Hell no. Like take responsibility, no accountability. I swear to God, I could have been one of those gays that were like astrology people are the worst because I did. Like I did get burned by one that was like stereotypical, blah, blah, blah. And like when we were breaking up, she was like, you know, and it was like an ancillary thing. Like it wasn't like we're breaking up because our astrology signs aren't compatible. (laughs) It was like- And like, we should have seen this coming, you know, like we weren't exactly compatible, like, th- like from co-star. Yeah. And I was just sitting there like, that really was an, an, an ancillary reason. Like you were just on the, you were on the big things that made sense. Right. And then you started going off on the things that didn't make any fucking sense. Like you're just making it worse for the both of us. And I need right. to go. Right. I need to go right now. I need to get Please the fuck stop. out of here. So. I'm guilty of that sometimes. So I, 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 but I, I say it with like a grain of salt like my my ex now who her cat is here because I live with her as well um is she has like an Aries Venus and I don't know like if you know what the Venus sign is supposed to be about like sex and love like that's what it's supposed to symbolize in your chart um so like when I first met her I said like well what's gonna happen is like Aries Aries like super just like love the beginning of stuff and then they kind of like burn out and they're over it and then they're yeah. like they're out and I was like and that's what's gonna happen because that's your Venus sign and like spoiler alert <laughs> she's my ex and I yeah I feel like that's kind of exactly what happened it was like started off like really strong and then like after a year it was kind of just like I'm over it it's not for me anymore so uh, it was like validating in a way I mean it sucked but it was also just like When things like that happen, it's very easy to say like, astrology is real. And I'm not saying it's not, or it is, but it's just kind of like, wow, maybe if I would have been serious about like the possibility of that happening, I could have seen it coming. I don't know. I don't know. Astrology is weird because like, I, I feel like what's the point where it is 
it might be true, but it, like, what if it's self-affirming bias? Like if you're thinking yes. something's going to happen and then it happens and then you're like, I, right. knew, it. I knew like, it was going to happen. I did it. Like maybe and, I just like, yeah. internalized that thought and like brought it into fruition. Like who knows? Yeah. And that's why it's just like, it's all fucking uncertain. Like life is uncertain and people are just, and everyone's guilty of it, trying to like grasp onto something, regardless if it's yes. religion or law of attraction or astrology or fucking crystals and, and whatever. Um, it's all just to, to ground you and try and make sense of like the things that are happening. Um, it's very profound. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's my Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make um, Oh yeah, go for it. All right, I like to ask first. I mean, like, I just don't want it around my face. Oh, well, then but we're like, good. like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't want to like, I don't want to yeah. like be that girl, you know? Of course. <laughs> but like, course. if you could just leave the room, that would be chill. Imagine I just like walked out, <laughs> and just hear my voice. <laughs> <laughs> you take it in your pan, and you're just like that stupid fucking bitch. It's it's um, ridiculous though that I can't go like 45 minutes to an hour without doing it because like. But I, I, I justify it and say, like, I've given up every other fucking vice. Like, I'm going to have the vape and I'm going to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it, you know? Some vices are better it. than other vices. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you know, where regardless of where they are at on the unhealthy scale, like if they're like, it's like harm reduction, you know, which Absolutely. I'm sure you're familiar with harm reduction with sobriety. But um, I took a, I was a psychology major. And so I took a class on drug policy and I took a class on like psychopharmacology because I find it so interesting um just and just drugs how they they do that stuff and I think that's deterred me a lot from like wanting to be curious about certain things because Mm -hmm. I knew so much about it that I was like oh fuck like I can't do it now because I know too much about it I'm gonna be in my head it's gonna be bad like drugs you mean like certain drugs yeah like certain drugs yeah stuff like that um but we learned about harm reduction and I had no clue I mean coming from like the institution of America where it's just like you, you, it's abstinence and nothing else. Like you're just like, no drugs, no drugs. Even though there's so many studies that say that's fucking the worst thing you can do. Absolutely. I'm pleasantly surprised that like that the topic of harm reduction was brought up because I'm very much in like a sobriety, like bubble in my like influencer sphere. And I feel like that was like, that's something that I wouldn't even think that it was taught about, yeah. which is amazing. That's really, really great because yeah, <clears throat> statistically finding ways to drink and use um, that will cause less harm to yourself and others is much better than trying to be abstinent and then, you know, relapsing over and over and over again. And yeah. it's, oh, there's so much drama and like, it sounds crazy, but there's so much drama in the sobriety like community because abstinence is like really, you know, like the big dog, like everybody thinks that that's kind of like the, the goal when in reality, it's, first of all, it's not realistic to assume that everybody is going to be abstinent. And second of all, it's harmful to perpetuate the idea that unless you're abstinent, then your sobriety or your recovery isn't valuable or, you know, you're not learning or you're not growing because, you know, that couldn't be further from the truth plus people who are abstinent like can be fucking assholes like I'm abstinent and I'm an asshole a lot of the time (laughs) so it's just yeah it's crazy I think it's yeah it's like an insurmountable goal you know what I mean and I feel like it people feel I I feel like if I were you know like in sobriety and and I broke it like I can't imagine how trying to hit this goal of like needing to be absent and that's what's going to make me a better person and like if I don't do that then I'm going to be shit for the rest of my life like yeah. it, that is I can't imagine like the self-esteem like hit that that takes and like feeling like everyone is you know like judging you and for not being able to hit that and it's just yeah. it seems like such an impossible thing to hit when in reality like we should be looking at harm reduction we should be looking at that and so many countries do it like so many countries do harm reduction and have had incredible progress you know like Australia for one I remember and I had like a super liberal professor um which was awesome and she had talked about just like there were places where there were just houses and they were like you can't drink anywhere else and they would just go there to drink you know what I Mm. mean and it took away certain aspects of of that like places where you could go and and shoot up heroin it took away the desirability of like hiding and like 
ooh, all this like stuff. Cause that's part of it. Yeah. yeah. It's complicated because I, I practiced harm reduction probably for six to seven years without knowing that it was harm reduction because I didn't have the terminology to say that it was me doing everything that I possibly could to drink or use drugs, um, successfully. And I didn't realize that what I was trying to do was like reduce harm in my, in my use. Right. Um, because it, it, it really is not, it's frowned upon in the sober community, which is ridiculous. It shouldn't be, but it is like, if I had like a term for that, when I was doing it, I feel like I could have built community around that. I could have probably gotten sober sooner. I probably could have had more resources. Like there's no shame in any path to recovery. There's no shame in any path to sobriety. It's so non-linear, like everybody's journey is going to be different, but unfortunately like the, the 12 step and like AA Alcoholics Anonymous, NA Narcotics Anonymous, like that very dogmatic um, way of thinking has kind of perpetuated the thinking of like the sobriety community at large. Um, So a lot of people still do say, you know, like abstinence is the only way once an addict, always an addict, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. It's like, there's no room for gray and it's, it's tough, but that's definitely something I try to um, touch on in my content um, in a way that's like digestible and entertaining Yeah, because I like, I don't know. It, it goes back to that saying, like, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I'm going to make jokes about it. Cause that's how I fucking deal with stuff. And I, you know, I hope I can reach somebody and let them like, show them like, this is not the only way there mm-hmm. are other ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, people don't have the terminology. Like, like that was yeah. the first time I had heard it and I was 21 Right. And it seemed such like a wildly progressive thing. Oh my God, these countries are doing it and stuff like that. And not even just with, you know, sobriety in general, but like even teaching abstinence when it comes to sex, like, it's just like, Oh, Mm. just don't have sex. Right. And, 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 but it's like, but then when they do, they don't have the knowledge and then it becomes the worst case scenario, which is a child, an unwanted child at a young age that colors your entire life. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're doing shit all wrong. I think it's a conspiracy. I think they fucking know. I think they know what they're doing. There's just oh, no way know. to not know. They, ha- they have, have the know. research. They know yeah. that what they're fucking doing and it's putting yeah. people down and it's keeping people in poverty and mm. it, it's lessening the education, which is the whole reason why people like kids go to school for fucking 12 years. But it's like, yeah. we're not going to teach you that much. We're not going to teach you about finances. We're not going to teach you about actual shit because like, that's not good for the economy. Right. Right. Or like emotion regulation or, you know, mindfulness, things that could possibly help us to even have uh, a better understanding of like actual real life scenarios. Like, I I feel like if they taught kids mindfulness in school, maybe there wouldn't be so many outbursts and maybe so many kids wouldn't get like misdiagnosed with ADHD, which is like, I don't know. It's a whole vicious shit cycle. This is a positive episode, huh? (laughs) No, it, it's, it, we talk about serious shit and funny shit. Like it's not really, yeah. there's no really real, real direction. I like getting into that stuff because people need Me too. to hear it, yeah. you know? So that does, that stuff doesn't, um, you know, doesn't phase me at all, regardless of where it goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, tell me a little bit about, you know, you, you talk a lot about having, being neurodivergent, having ADHD, stuff like that. And I really think it's a good conversation to talk about because like, I didn't start understanding that term. Like I didn't even hear that, like in my studies, you know, Hmm. like I didn't hear, and that's weird. It's psychology. That's weird. You would hear about the terminology of people using, oh, neurodivergent things. And it wasn't, it was always just like, oh, like people who are autistic, people who have ADHD, first and first language, which is still good. It's, it's, you know, politically correct and, and, and putting the person first, but like, I started hearing neurodivergent literally on TikTok, like on Instagram. I might've seen it on Instagram first. And I was like, I like that. Like, I like that. That sounds, that sounds like the Divergent series. It sounds fucking like we're taking our power back. Yeah. I can't remember what I did yesterday, but we're we're taking our power back. I can't remember where I left my keys. We're taking our power back. (laughs) Literally today, like today, right before this podcast, I, I lost my keys and my car is parked in a spot where... I can't be parked and I can't move the car because I lost the keys. Yeah. 
Um, I know I'm pissed. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I felt similarly when I discovered the term neurodivergent and a lot of the time I find myself like finding, um, comfort in it and like empowerment in it because the opposite is neurotypical and like, who the fuck wants to be typical? Like yeah. I would rather be neurodivergent and like mm -hmm. it, 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 it really just like creates this understanding of like, it's just a different way of thinking. It's yeah. just a different way of the brain working. It's, it's mm -hmm. not wrong. It's not even necessarily, um, this might be controversial, but like a disease, it's not necessarily like a sickness. Like that's not to say that it doesn't come with many, many challenges, especially when we live in a world that's like built by and for neurotypical people. And like, we live under capitalism and mm -hmm. everything else that makes it very difficult for, for neurodivergent people to like exist and function, um, well and have, you know, a high quality of life. But, um, it, it it's just like, I found, I found a lot of empowerment in, in, in that term as well. Um, because it kind of took away that idea of just like hyperactive little boys like yeah. it's more than that it's daydreamy girls yeah like yeah. it's 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 more than that and it's like there's a community there and it, it it felt really good to like make this journey from like being so shameful about being somebody with ADHD like my whole life because mm -hmm. of the ways that it presented and because maybe I, I haven't like reached the same like measures of success that you know non-ADHD people or people who weren't doing drugs and alcohol like every yeah. day um <laughs> but that's related to you know so um it's it, it was really it's been a really really nice and affirming journey to go from this place of like I'm stupid I'm lazy I don't understand mm -hmm. what's going on I can't pay attention because blah 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 to yeah. oh no I'm just I just think differently than a lot of people I think the same as these other people that I can like connect yeah. with and I need to find ways to make my environment work for me. Like that's all, like it, 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 it was really, um, it's been nice and it's continuing, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm starting to be more um, open and like honest about my ADHD journey, my neurodivergent journey and make more videos about that because I've had like an outpouring of people who have gone through similar things. And like, that's common in sobriety. Like you're always gonna get somebody who's like, Hey, I have 30 days sober. Like your content's so inspiring to me, but mm -hmm. the amount of people who have come to me and been like, Hey, I'm neurodivergent or I have ADHD or I'm autistic. And like everything that you're saying really resonates to me. Thank you. Like I wasn't expecting that at all. Oh, yeah. And it feels really good, you know? Mm -hmm. 100%. And I feel like people don't realize like how interconnected those things can be, you know, oh, like, yeah. um, addiction, and being neurodivergent and like just in, in just in general like in the neurodivergent yeah. community just the different things like so i i almost was a clinical child psychologist i worked mm. at children's all through college i worked at the center for adhd they had a behavior modification camp it's one of the best in the country and it was so eye-opening like completely eye-opening and this is someone my mom is a special education teacher she has been Mine an administrator too. no yeah yeah <laughs> it's wild right it is so wild it is so wild yeah. you know what's wild i've never heard my mom use the term neurodivergent once yeah mine either not that she's not she is respected in the community yeah. and the profession she's good at her job fucking aces yeah never yeah. once heard her say it. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Yeah. Because like they, it wasn't, it probably wasn't used. My mom hasn't either. And she's been in special education for like three decades now. So yeah. it's like, I taught her that term. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. When I worked at children's, I worked with the kids who were the worst of the worst, you know, right. they were also like had money. There were only a couple kids who were on scholarship because it costs like six grand for the this mm. behavior modification camp but um it was intense which is problematic I would say it, oh it's elitist place. yeah, yeah. It, it's problematic to say the least but like you see the kids who are getting kicked out of schools you know like you're seeing kids who have other comorbid disorders a lot of the times OCD anxiety autism ODD conduct like yep. we had to go through so much training 
just to, to do the camp. I mean, it was physically, emotionally, mentally exhausting every day, but it was imagine. one of the best things I've ever done. It showed me like, there's so many different types of, you know, kids. And, and, and I think like people think like ADHD is like one thing or the other, like they think it's like super hyperactive and it's a spectrum. Like there's like middle oh, yeah. and then you have like hyperactive and then you have like the lethargic, you know, yeah. like the daydreamy woo woo, whatever. Yeah. And like people are on a spectrum and we got the kids who were like this, you know what I yeah. mean? Some were kind of here. Most of the time they were here. Um, yeah. And it was so interesting to see each kid and to see how diverse their needs are. Like yeah. what were, you know, there were kids that if they were on medication, one, there was one kid that was probably the best kid in the whole, like whole damn place. And he was amazing. Like he was such a good, I was like, why the fuck is this kid here? He goes off his medication, whole Done. new kid. Like yeah. different kid, like the kid on medication is him. It's him. Yes. His dopamine's raised. His frontal cortex is working. It's all good. Yeah, it's it's working. You know, but if he's off of it, he's a opposite, completely opposite. And it was yeah. like crazy to see the the differences, um, and the kids like that just couldn't make friends to save their lives. Like yeah. the kids that you know couldn't make friends because they were bad at sports. We like taught them how to play mm. a lot of the time how to play sports. Some were really athletic and some weren't. Yeah. And so that, that hurts their development, um, not being able to be good at sports, emotion regulation, not being, knowing how to make friends and so not having many friends, like families were on the brink of like divorce. Like there was a crazy shit. You just um, hit like seven of like Maslow's like hierarchy of needs and like, they don't have like three of them by the time they're nine. Yeah. Like, like, of course, like the kids getting set up for a challenging life experience <laughs> yeah and even the counselors yeah. I mean, most most of the counselors had dealt with it too like you could you yeah. could see that they were in the profession because they themselves had been a part of a part of that hurt of not having friends and not having this and that so then there's yeah. more empathy for that because you know it's kind of hard to see an adult that's just like oh like they're just like fucking in order this or that and yeah. I think from that perspective too I mean there was one guy that was in like his doctoral whatever so he was like underneath and I was like Oh yeah, like I can totally see everything that's that's um, taking place here, and it is really interesting because like my dad is severely ADHD, but they don't diagnose you in the eighties, right? Like they don't right. do that. Like, but he was terrible at school, could never focus. He is yeah. he's anal as fuck. I had to hide the things that he usually would misplace. Like I was just used used to hiding things in the house. Yeah. So that he would compulsive cleaner you know, yeah. compulsive warrior, not like OCD ish, but there's yeah. like so much at play there. My mom is a complete opposite, which probably right. makes, makes sense. But like my dad has functioned well after, and like, he was able to like have success professionally. Friends were fine, but like his school was just awful. He barely made it out of high school, barely made it out of college. Yeah. I don't know how he made it out of college. Like, I swear to God, I think he, I don't know what he did. I think he had girls yeah. do his homework for him. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty badass. <laughs> but yeah, I, I look at that and I'm like, how the fuck did you do that? You know, like how, and, and I see some traits of myself in that. Like I see yeah. some things mild, mild ADHD for sure. But like my mom being in the sphere was like, well, you don't have academic issues. You don't have friend issues. So like these are just- That goes back to the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. It works. And so I'm like, okay, well, I can't say, I can't really say I have it then because like, you won't let me get diagnosed because there's right. no like real problems and only people with real problems go to get them diagnosed. But I've always yes. been interested because I'm like, yeah, I have these quirks, but like, they're like pertinent, persistent things that everyone sees. Everyone makes jokes about. It's like part of my personality. And I'm like, well, you never, you never let me see what's, what's happening because now I yeah. have all this shit, but I can't really say like, oh, I don't want to be one of those performing people that are like, I have ADHD because I'm like a crackhead and like, Bleh. you know, like I fucking hate that <laughs> yeah. shit too. Same, same. You know, yeah. I'm like, that, there are some things that I just like can't get with the program and like no one else seems to have these fucking issues. So like, yeah. <laughs> But like a, a mild ADHD experience, like a mild neurodivergent experience or like an ongoing experience, a lifelong experience is still valid because, yeah. because it's, 
depending on like if we were to call it a quirk you know what I mean depending on the fucking quirk like it could be the difference between getting into college and not or like staying in college or not or becoming addicted or not like Mm -hmm. the the comorbidity of like ADHD and substance abuse is wild like it's wild because if you look at it and I'm sure you you probably know all this but like ADHD, one of the biggest things is emotional regulation and impulse control. So yeah. you have somebody who's desperate for dopamine. Um, they get put in a situation that they're impulsive and they're around something that is possibly bringing them relief. Yeah. Like it's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for addiction on the far end of it, or at the very least substance abuse. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but that's, that's another thing too, because that addiction is even on like a spectrum, like so many people and like myself included for a very, very long time. I didn't think that I was bad enough to get sober. Like I was just Uh, like, well, I still have a job and I still have a girlfriend and I'm not this like low down hobo like shooting heroin into my fucking toenails in the alleyway so like do I do I need to get sober like am I worthy of sobriety um but meanwhile anytime I did drink I blacked out and anytime I did black out I would become violent or I would become aggressive or I would become suicidal and I try to help people to also ask themselves this question it's less about asking like am I an alcoholic or am I an addict and it's more about asking like do drugs and alcohol give more to me or do they take more away? You know, it's very nuanced and there's a lot of like gray area. And like, I think a lot of people, especially because they, they usually enter into like 12 step treatment. It's like, if they don't identify with the term alcoholic, which in 12 step, they, they don't force you to, but they want you to identify as that, you know, you have to say, hi, I'm Allie, I'm an alcoholic. And if you, don't necessarily identify with that, then it's basically like, well, then you don't belong here. So you don't get sobriety. Like if you haven't, you know, gotten divorced, if you haven't done this, if you haven't done that, you know, then I guess you're not an alcoholic and I guess you don't deserve sobriety or you don't need to get sober. And it's just like, dude, like, no, there's just such like, it's a continuum. Like there's so many different, sometimes for some people, like addiction is just like a experience that they have you know like who the fuck is not an alcoholic in college like 80 percent of people are binge drinkers in college and then when you're out of college and you don't get your shit together then it becomes a problem where people are like yeah "Yeah, I don't really want to go to fucking Applebee's and get hammered on Thursdays yes sorry right I don't want to go to Applebee's ever honestly (laughs) (laughs) just don't bring me there (laughs) and that's that's that (laughs) might throw my glass at the window because fuck that place yeah but yeah I feel like yeah the people have imposter syndrome with like well I'm not on death's doorstep therefore like yeah I probably don't need to go to just with anything right like unless I'm like at the fucking bottom there I don't think I need to have a problem and I don't think it's like just denial or just that I think it's like beliefs surrounding when to get help is not preventative it's after damage has already been done which is just a whole societal institution of just not preventative care for anything physical mental whatever because then it's just like well it's imposter syndrome because you're like do you really have it though yeah do you yeah you know because there's this concept of have depression um, if you've never killed yourself like (laughs) right like have you tried Um, (laughs) like yeah yeah yeah. and it's it's insane it's so nice to talk about this stuff though and I mean there's this like perception that like if you don't hit rock bottom then like keep going until you do and then you can get sober like yeah no no it's like you hit rock bottom when you stop digging and like when you decide like it's time for me to like make change it's time for me to you know do something else and that's not to like diminish the experience of people who truly are drug addicts and truly are alcoholics because they very much exist. But I I don't think that treatment for those people necessarily should be like the standard for people who aren't on that side of it, you know? So um, it's just not a one size fits all thing for, as for everything, you know, like neurodivergent people, um, mental health issues, like addiction, sobriety, like all of it. It's just like, so very nuanced. Mm-hmm. It really yeah. is. 
and the abstinence is just that one size fits all, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I, I literally know of one person. It was my great aunt and she was a, you know, serial cigarette smoker. And that was when, you know, they, we didn't like, know it was oh. bad. <laughs> yeah. And it was so yeah. social and like everyone at least socially did it. And she like had a threat of having throat cancer. Um, this mm-hmm. is before I was born, but she literally quit cold Turkey. I'm wow. like, I've never heard of that in my whole life. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially with one of the most addictive, su- the most, I think the most addictive yeah, substance for sure. That, Next to that sugar. Bitch, yeah. That bitch quit yeah. cold fucking Turkey. Like, That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you do that? Like you pass the social stage. So like, this is full on addiction. This isn't just like doing it socially. You know right. what I mean? This is like fully, this is a fully a thing. And even, even something like cancer or something like that typically can't cure addiction. It can't cure you to not do something. There's like, you didn't have, you know, gum, no patch. What yeah. What are you? Yeah. Sub, she, you're inhuman, my, my guy. She raw dogged it. She raw dogged she it. She raw dogged that shit. Yeah. I mean, like, it, and it, it's crazy because some people, because some people really do that. Like some people quit meth on a Tuesday like it just like how like how meth is crazy meth gives you more I saw this TikTok and I didn't know this and it was just like yesterday or something and it was like it gives you more dopamine or serotonin I don't know which one than like an orgasm like an orgasm was like 200 something I don't know what the unit of oh if you find that you have to send it to me because I want to oh I think I liked it so if I do I'll send it to you but it was like 200 and meth was like 1200 like, right. just one hit, like just one hit. Right. And then you wonder why like people with ADHD or neurodivergent people often end up abusing stimulants because it's doing, it, yeah, they're trying to it's regulate, but they're, yes. And, but then you have this fucking illicit substance that, you know, is extremely addictive and yeah, it's, it's wild. It's, it's craziness. Mm-hmm. Like I, I recently started looking into just like, why why does nicotine like calm me down when like almost everyone else I know it like makes them anxious it like amps them up and it's like oh because stimulants calm me down like I can drink three cups of coffee and take a nap (laughs) and it's like that that makes sense to me that it it's it's calming it makes it harder to quit because it gives me justification right but yeah that's another thing entirely so yeah, I think it's, it's super crazy. nuanced. It's super, it's, it's yeah. so weird. Cause like my dad is so very much like on that, not more severe end, but he's very like moderate, I'd say. And he can't do any type of coffee, no stimulants, no nothing. Really? Like, absolutely nothing. Yeah. I, I can't either. Like I take Damn. maybe like a half, I have tea in the morning, but if I take any more, like it's like shaky, anxious. So no meth for you. No meth for me. No, no stimulants, All right. <laughs> stimulants for me. Um, All right. Fair enough. But yeah, like I think people are just trying to feel normal and they're like, oh, I feel normal when I'm taking this, this and this. And then people who are not are like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, how do you feel normal? Like that sounds like addiction. Like that sounds like an issue. Like you're trying to be more than you are. And it's like, I'm just trying to be free. I'm just trying to get on. Yeah. I'm just trying to like keep my head above water a and be just like function to the same capacity alongside the rest of the world like I, I remember when there was a there was a period of time where I before I got sober um like before I first of all I was misdiagnosed like my entire life like they they told me I had a personality disorder they they told me I was bipolar one I was bipolar two I was fucking generalized anxiety disorder and the thing is, is that like a lot of people who are, are neurodivergent, um, they just have like a collection of symptoms of different things. And if you go to, you know, the wrong, not even the wrong person, but depending on where you end up, if they're not like super um, like knowledgeable about ADHD or, you know, neurodivergent experiences, then it's like, you very well can be like misdiagnosed for a long time. <laughs> But I remember like before I got sober, I was in the habit of abusing stimulants, not realizing I was self-medicating, not realizing that I was just trying to be like normal. And I would remember my friends would like take some of my stimulants and they'd be like, how do you take this? Like, how do you take this every day? And I'm like, what do you like, what do you mean? Like, it, it was just so strange to me that what makes me feel calm and normal makes you feel like cleaning out our refrigerator for four hours, (laughs) you know, like it it was just kind of a, 
a very strange thing to witness. But at that point I was, you know, using them while drinking and yeah. not, not in a therapeutic way. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was wild. I think Thank your cat has ADHD. I think she might. I don't know. She's going to rip her fucking sutures open. I, I need to check them. I'm like worried that she's like going to fuck them up. Why does she have? What? She got spayed last oh. Wednesday. And so, but she like. That has, was recent. Yeah. It's been almost seven days. They tell you seven to 10. And she just like climbs on it. She's just doing whatever the fuck she wants. And I don't know what to do because I like, I'm not engaging in it or anything, but like, she's just being a crazy fuck. And like, give her a little cbd i think i should i don't know but i'm just worried i'm like i just if i have to take her back and like ugh, because yeah. like she did something to her stitches or whatever but i mean she's not lethargic she's obviously like not in clearly <laughs> not yeah. internally bleeding or any of the other things i read on webmd so <laughs> i i think she's she's probably okay based on the the hopping around that she's doing she seems yeah. like she's living life she is she's she's very much living life um well cool let's go ahead and get to question with the queers all right guys this is the part of the podcast where we answer your questions on life love happiness etc um questions with the queers so you know as always we do uh, unqualified advice on this podcast um so today's question is from brianna she is 19 and she writes Hey guys, I don't know if you do this. So this is really great because I, kn- I didn't know that I would be able to answer this question. Okay. Um, hey guys, I don't know if you'll be able to do this, but I am recently sober, recently queer. And mm. I am wondering because dating is really hard mm. when you get sober. How do you guys manage, you know, coming out and also being sober? First, I'm going to give a shameless plug to my YouTube channel because I have several <laughs> videos Go about those, those exact things, like coming out as sober, coming out as queer, um, dating while sober, um, being in a queer relationship while getting sober, all of it. So there's a lot of resources there that I would not have suggested had that question not been very specific. But how do I, how did I manage it? Can we repeat the end of the question again? Yeah. Um, so she said, uh, recently sober, recently queer, how do you deal with, you know, coming out and, and also being sober? So I'm assuming, mm. I'm assuming she's meaning like, cause I, I don't know much about it, but I'm assuming yeah. she's meaning like, cause like, n- like not dating or something like that, but like wanting to yeah. date because yeah. you're queer and you're coming out, but then you're also sober. So you're not, yeah. you know, it's like a yeah. conflict. Yeah. That's what like I assumed when I read it. So I was like, ah. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that vibe too. Like it's hard enough to even like date queer. It's hard enough to date sober, but now you're <laughs> dating queer and sober. Yes. Um, I would say like probably the, the thing that worked best for me was like, I only ever date people through apps. Like that's the only way I ever fucking meet people. Like just even before the pandemic, just because like, I don't know, I'm more charming in front of a screen. Um, and I am very explicit about, like my sobriety um, from the start. So like, it's going to, it's not going to be a surprise to anybody. And especially like when you're first getting sober, it's, I think it's really important to like prioritize it over getting into a relationship. Like people will tell you like, stay single for a year um, before you start dating again. Like when you're first getting sober, I don't think that that's necessarily true because there's no hard and fast rules but I would say like explore what it means for you to be queer and explore like how that feels and explore what it feels like to be sober like before you um like jump into anything with anybody but it's totally cool to like meet other queer sober people there's a huge queer sober network on Instagram on TikTok like find your people and like connect with them like I'm your people so like connect with me and just kind of like be gentle with yourself as you transition through these things because it's two like major major life altering things to be happening at once so it can be really tough yeah that's really great i know that i can't really answer this question but i did have uh, another person on lauren stevens you probably know her cuz she's queer mm-hmm. she does the she does the lundy impersonations 
Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, now I know. Yeah, yes. but she is, she's queer and sober, and she talks a little bit about it, so I, I forget what episode it is, but I, I will put it in the description below if you guys want more resources, because we do touch on it um, yeah. in that episode, but I think it's just like with anything that's like um, a, a huge life transition, something, a trauma, those kind of things, like they, you know, like it, in my personal life, I've never dealt with sobriety, but I have dealt with you know, certain situations that are traumatic that yeah. I was like, I, I need to like, I need to wait a little bit. And I also think that might be equally as hard when you're doing something that is very hard and taxing, like getting sober, because like, you know, you need support systems and, and things like that. So then it's yeah. like, okay, well, I can't have a girlfriend. So then like that, that's just like things are out of your control, right? Like friends, yeah relationships with family members and then also being queer like you might not have like that so then it's like really tough I feel like yeah. when you're not in a position where you have like strong friendships or what if your friendships were damaged by you know being queer or or being yeah. sober regardless if it's like you hurt those relationships or you don't have those relationships because you cut ties because they're not sober like there's right. so many different like things so it's like it's yeah. so hard it's like so paradoxical like okay like I can't have a relationship but like I can have these relationships but not like yeah. these ones and like that, that's yeah. like super fucking like I can only imagine like how like nuts that must be yeah and like the queer community like there's a statistic about it you probably know it I, I don't but I like, don't know in general like queer like a, a lot of like my queer community building was based around alcohol and drugs and like it's it's very like prominent in our community for us to like find our people at bars or like just like in settings where like alcohol and drugs just like run rampant so it's like there's a grieving process there's a grieving process of like getting sober because you're you're letting go of of something that like has probably like understandably brought you comfort and made you feel part of so it's not easy but I, I would say like yeah support support is so big just like finding your people yep Find new people, find new people. Um, well, awesome. Well, I will go ahead. I'll put like the link to your YouTube um, videos in the description. And then I'll also put the link to Lauren Stevens episode for you guys. Um, if you guys are kind of struggling with some of those same similar things. Um, cool. Well, let's go ahead and go to the lightning rounds. This is just rapid fire questions. Are you ready? So I, I can't over explain anything is what you're saying. I mean, if you, I, I don't know, go with the flow. Do, it, do oh, what you feel. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Do what you feel. Think, don't think. All right, let's um, do it. Bean jackets or flannels? Flannels. Giving presents or getting presents? Getting presents. <laughs> um, TP, toilet paper, do you roll it under or over? Under? I don't know. Okay. Over? Uh, What's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm an under, I'm an under gal. Over, I feel like you just lose control. It just yeah. goes faster. I don't like the loss of control. So I don't like that. Who does? And I don't want to use too much. Right. So. The hot um, commodity. Yeah, exactly. Um, beanies or snapbacks? Um, beanies. But only. Mm, beanies, but only because. This isn't a snapback, right? Well, I guess just a backwards hat is kind of what oh, I Oh, then mean. a backwards hat. A backwards hat. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. A backwards hat. Yeah. <laughs> I switched because it started getting nice in Ohio and I was like, I need to switch. I need to switch to uh, switch to the hats because I was wearing beanies the whole time. I was like, now it's time to switch. They're two yeah. seasons. Beanies. For sure. Snap back. Absolutely. Um, so that's what I did. Um, cake or cookies? That's hard. Cookies. Okay. I love sweets. Cookies. I love sweets too. Um, coffee or tea? Coffee. coffee. I'm switching now. Coffee. coffee coffee i'm from new jersey <laughs> i know it was slight it wasn't like i was being dramatic about it but i heard coffee. it coffee 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 last song you listened to on repeat oh uh kehlani um faking it oh okay okay have you heard that song it's so good it's like it's very it's so good it's very easy to repeat over and over again like it's it's my jam that was one of my questions it was gonna be king princess or kehlani but we've already answered that one so yep <laughs> <laughs> um uh, last question Janelle Monet or Tegan and Sarah Tegan and Sarah because like they they were like my coming out story They're like I, I went I went to a Tegan and Sarah concert by myself at age 17 how sad I don't think that's sad people go to concerts beautiful. 
I would go to, I haven't been, well, I haven't been to a concert by myself, but I would. <laughs> my mom was there, but I wouldn't let her hang out with me. She stood in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet her hair looked good though. I bet it oh, looked fucking nice. great. <laughs> all right well thank you so much Allie, for being on this podcast um if you want to check out more about ally you can find them at is it ally.campbell on tiktok it's ally.k.campbell but you can just google ally k campbell as long as you use the k ally k you'll campbell find, you'll find the real one there you go and you can always find me on all platforms at brie logan guys if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe where you are listening viewing um and check out our full video episodes on youtube link is below that's it for this episode, my queers. Be you, be queer, stay safe. We will see you on the next episode.